Strange unexplained carvings in the ground that can only be observed from the air. An ancient manuscript containing gibberish. And the death of one of the most influential leaders in world history. What do these all have in common? We've all heard the old adage, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. But many times, ancient records are not as complete as we'd hoped they'd be, which leads to gaps in the historical record. And simply put, there's a lot of things in history we simply do not know, and probably will never know, as is the case with these five ancient unsolved mysteries. The Nazca Lines were first mentioned in a book published in 1553, where they were described as trail markers. Although visible from nearby hills, it wasn't until 1927, when aircraft spotted them, that humans were able to observe them in their entirety. They are located in southern Peru and are believed to have been created between 500 BC and 500 AD. And while some of the lines are just that, lines, many depict a variety of living creatures stylized plants and imaginary beings, as well as geometric figures several miles long. And how they were made is pretty simple. By churning up the top layer of sand, it exposed a different colored sand underneath. And while the method of construction is simple, they certainly were not made by a group of drunken teenagers after a night of boozing it up in the woods. The longest continuous line is over 1,200 feet long, and with some of the designs being very intricate for the time, there was clearly a well thought out and concerted effort made to create them. And certainly, many people were involved in it. But you wouldn't expect them to last as long as they have. And some are well over 2,000 years old. And the reason is one of the things that makes them so intriguing. You see, that region of the world has a very unique climate. There is no wind or rain or any kind of natural erosion to disturb them. Think the moon and the astronauts' footprints that 50 years later have still gone undisturbed. So unless they are disturbed by a human or an animal, they could potentially remain intact for another 2,000 years. That's more than I can say for us. And probably the biggest mystery of the Nazca lines is why they were made in the first place, and opinions vary among scholars and historians. Some believe they were created to be seen by a deity, while others believe their purpose is to be seen by travelers from another planet. Two more plausible reasons are that they have some type of relevance to the agriculture calendar or as indicators of sacred routes between Nazca settlements. Me personally, I like the alien theory. Anyway, it is strange that the lines would not be fully appreciated by man for over 2,000 years after the invention of the airplane. I don't know, maybe that was the plan all along. Unfortunately, the true meaning of the Nazca lines may never be known, given that at the time they were created, written records are practically non-existent. From Peru, we head to the Atlantic Ocean. It's December 1872, and the Canadian ship named the De Gracia has set sail for the British port of Gibraltar. A member of the crew reports that he sees a ship sailing straight for them. The unknown vessel was moving erratically and its sails were not set in the correct position. And nobody could be seen on her deck. It was obvious that something was wrong. The captain of the Canadian ship, David Morehouse, who recognized the adrift ship as the Mary Celeste, sent his first mate, Oliver DeVoe, to board it and to investigate what was going on. Once on board, DeVoe found no signs of her crew or her captain, Benjamin Spooner Briggs, his wife, or their two-year-old daughter. Also missing was the ship's lifeboat. And strangest of all was the fact that the ship was found to be in seaworthy condition, leaving no obvious reason why she would be abandoned. And not only was the ship seaworthy, but there was enough food and water aboard to last six months. And the ship's sextant, 
chromometer and navigation book were all missing, as well as the ship's register, which seemed to suggest an orderly abandonment. The ship's logbook, however, was left behind with a final entry of 8 a.m. on the 25th of November. And since she was abandoned and left adrift at sea, Captain Morehouse decided to tow the Mary Celeste to port to be salvaged. And after a hearing, the captain and her crew were awarded 1,700 pounds for the ship. The discovery of the Mary Celeste sparked a three-month investigation by the British Vice Admiralty Court in Gibraltar. The investigation tested various theories, including piracy, mutiny, and sea monsters. <laughs> sea monsters. How I wish that one was true. Unfortunately, like the other theories tested, it couldn't be proven conclusively. The true fate of the Mary Celeste crew remains one of the greatest maritime mysteries of all time. And clearly you would not abandon a ship unless you thought it was in danger of sinking. But by what means? Over the years, several theories have been proposed to explain the mystery of the Mary Celeste. Some of the most popular theories include treachery, piracy, mutiny, and even alien abduction. You see, you came here for ancient mysteries, and I'll bet you didn't think we'd be talking about sea monsters and aliens, did you? Help! Sea monsters! <laughs> the ship was eventually sold and sailed for another 12 years until its captain deliberately ran it aground. Seriously. And despite nearly 130 years of research, maritime historians still don't know what became of the ship's crew on that fateful 1872 voyage. An uncertainty that makes the fate of the Mary Celeste one of the most fascinating unsolved mysteries of our time. Central Europe, 1912. A Polish rare book dealer named Wilfred Voynich purchased a manuscript from the Jesuits in Rome. The manuscript was originally in the possession of a cash-strapped library in Rome who sold some of their books to the Vatican but not all made it there to include this one. The manuscript contains bizarre drawings of esoteric plants, naked women, and astrological symbols. Well, that's weird. Yeah, tell me about it. It had no title or author named, but the biggest mystery was the fact that it was written in an unknown language. The writings in the manuscript appeared to its new owner to be nothing more than gibberish. And for over two decades, Voynich tried to get scholars interested in the manuscript in an effort to decipher its meaning. And the few that did show some interest were unsuccessful. And in 1930, Wilford Voynich died without ever finding out its meaning. But that's not the end of the story. After World War II, codebreakers tried to decipher it, but were unsuccessful. And then numerous scholars also tried, but you guessed it, they also failed. Now, several theories have been put forward to try to explain the book's contents and their meaning. Some think it's abbreviated Latin, while others think it's a form of Ukrainian. And still others, they think it's just an elaborate hoax perpetrated by Voynich. And there are others that believe the manuscript is referring to sea monsters or aliens. Oh, look, there is no way that that is true. Okay, I actually just made that one up. The hoax theory has certainly been proven not to be true. Carbon dating shows that the origin of the manuscript to be in the 15th century. While its providence is uncertain, it is known to have been owned by Emperor Rudolf II of Germany, who believed it to be the work of Roger Bacon, a medieval English philosopher and Franciscan friar. It is believed that Emperor Rudolf acquired the manuscript from English astrologer John Dee, who owned the manuscript along with a number of other Roger Bacon manuscripts. In 1969, the manuscript was given to the Beinecke Library by H.P. Krauss, who had purchased it from the estate of Ethel Voynich, Wilford Voynich's widow. While the search for the meaning of the manuscript continues to this day, like many other ancient mysteries, it may never be solved. It has taken on a kind of legendary status being mentioned in several novels and the video game Assassin's Creed. Cyrus the Great was known as a military genius and the founder of the first Persian Empire, 
which at the time was the largest empire in the world. He's also one of the most prominent figures in world history and is mentioned in several books of the Bible. And in the book of Isaiah, he is referred to as being anointed by the Lord. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty great. In the biblical accounts of Cyrus, he is portrayed as a wise and just ruler who respected the religious beliefs and practices of his subjects. His influence has been felt since his death in the 6th century BC. He has been referenced by leaders such as Alexander the Great and David Ben-Gurion, the first Prime Minister of Israel, who referred to Cyrus as his personal hero. Even Thomas Jefferson was influenced by him when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. And in Iran, he has achieved cult-like status. So for being such a prominent and influential figure, you'd think we'd know more about his death. But in actuality, we know very little. In fact, the Bible does not explicitly mention his death at all. And there are, you guessed it, conflicting accounts of his final moments. According to one ancient Greek historian, Cyrus died in battle against the Masagadi, a nomadic tribe from eastern Iran. The Masagadi were led by their queen, Tamiris, who was angered by Cyrus' proposed marriage and his subsequent attack on her people. After a series of battles, Tamiris defeated Cyrus and killed him, severing his head and dipping it in a bag of blood as a form of revenge. Seems a little extreme, but I wasn't there. Other accounts suggest that Cyrus may have died of natural causes or in a different battle. One Greek historian, for example, describes Cyrus as dying of illness, surrounded by his two sons and engaged in a philosophical discussion about the immortality of his soul. No, if your name is Cyrus the Great, you got to go out in a blaze of glory. And again, because of the lack of written records, it's highly unlikely that we will ever solve the mystery behind his death. From one revered world leader to the man who is probably the greatest conqueror the world has ever known, Genghis Khan. He ruled from 1206 AD to 1227 and expanded the Mongol Empire to become the largest land empire in history. When he died, his empire was 2.5 times larger than the territory controlled by the Roman Empire. And it's believed that 1 in 200 men worldwide are descended from him. Genghis Khan was known for his military prowess, leadership, and administrative skills. He established a legal code, promoted trade and commerce, and encouraged religious tolerance within his empire. However, he was also known for his brutality and ruthlessness in battle, particularly towards those who resisted his rule. In other words, submit or die. Neither option is perfect. As you've probably already guessed, his death is somewhat of a mystery. Shocking, right? His death, which occurred in 1227 AD, was kept a secret by his family and followers, and various legends have been told about his death, including that he succumbed to blood loss after being stabbed or castrated by a princess. Ouch. Died of injuries sustained after falling from his horse, or died of an infected arrow during his final campaign. However, modern researchers suggest that these legends were likely invented well after Genghis Khan's death and that he may have died by a more common condition, such as an infectious disease. But hey, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. But how he died is not the focus here. We want to know where he's buried. A mausoleum in Mongolia was constructed as a memorial to Genghis Khan. The problem is, his body isn't there. You see, he left strict orders that upon his death, he was to be buried in a secret location in an unmarked grave. And legend has it that 2,000 people attended his funeral and then were subsequently killed so that the location would never be known. I knew there was a reason why I don't attend funerals. Efforts have been made over the years to locate his final resting place, but have been unsuccessful. Legends and myths surround the search for his burial place, which have served to add to the mystery. 
I think half the fun about learning about historical events is that you never know the whole story, which leaves us to our own imaginations. And the human brain is capable of dreaming up all kinds of crazy conspiracies. One such mystery is the death of the first man in space, Yuri Gagarin. After his historic trip to space, he was one of the most famous men on Earth. But his fame only lasted a short time, and the circumstances surrounding his death are strange indeed. To learn about the mysterious death of the first man in space, click the screen now. And until next time, I'm Dennis Gill for Revealing History.